All right, so now let's kind of discuss a few kind of simplifying assumptions we're going to make, um, especially this week. And we're going to loosen them as, as we develop this model. But it's going to be a lot easier for us to kind of really simplify the model at first, kind of understand how it's working and the mechanics of the model. And then we can start adding back these layers of complication uh, to make it maybe a bit more realistic about you know, how the real world looks as much as this kind of stylized model does. All right, so again, let's just write out our aggregate expenditure function. It's just going to be useful for me to be able to refer to it as we go through these assumptions. Maybe this will look the same, so I'll get a different color. Let's give up on that blue. Assumptions. So the first assumption that we're going to make is there's no foreign trade. No trade. So there's no foreign trade is what I mean by that. Um, so essentially that means NX equals zero. So we're kind of getting rid of the, the net exports part of our um, expenditures. Maybe I'll, I'll number them. The second is, is that there's no government. So this is a libertarian's dream here. There's no government, which means that government expenditure equals zero and and taxes are equal zero. This will kind of play a role when we talk about consumption. And so that means kind of dropped out um, the G. And so our AE function is just C plus I. And we're really going to concentrate on these first two um, kind of categories of expenditure or desired expenditure. Um, and then we're going to add these back in the next module. And so the third assumption that we're going to make is that the price level is constant. And, and what this price level constant, you know, kind of really fundamentally means is that we're kind of ignoring the supply side of the economy. We're all, we're all you know, almost just assuming that the aggregate supply curve, which we'll talk about in the future, is flat. We're really gonna concentrate on the demand side of the economy. So this is gonna be a de demand-driven model. We're kind of essentially assuming that firms can just produce more without having to raise the price of their goods, um, which is probably not a great assumption. Um, so it's a demand-driven model. We're kind of shutting down the supply side of, of the economy in that sense. And so if you see demand-driven model and any kind of questions, it's, it's kind of going to talk about what we're, what we're doing this week and a little bit as well next week. We're going to add price levels in in a couple, couple modules um, in the future. And so we can start to see inflation and price level changes, and that's going to be a much more accurate description of, where, um, of what the economy might look like. Okay, so we've made some assumptions and which allowed us to get rid of the government, with, you know, whatever your opinion on that is, as well as uh, trade with other countries. And so now our, again, this is desired aggregate expenditure. is desired consumption and I'll just have to make a longer error here and this is desired investment oops investment and so you know what we're going to do next is kind of go through these two categories and talk about you know what might they look like theoretically in terms of you know what's determining people's desired level of consumption in our economy. We're gonna have a really simple view of investment, but we're gonna spend a little bit more time in consumption. But we're gonna go by these category through these categories and think about what's gonna affect them, you know, how we might model them in a in the simplest way. Um, and then we can kind of start talking about equilibrium and then changes in equilibrium. But before we get into these individual categories, let's let's be a little bit uh, more thorough in, what, in the explanation of what desired means. So I keep on saying, you know, this desired aggregate expenditure, desired consumption investment. What I mean by desired, what I don't mean, maybe I'll start with, not what um, someone would, um, would spend 
if they wanted it. If they wanted, could have anything. Maybe that's not a great sentence or explanation, but it's what I mean by that is it's not like, hey, how, how much consumption do you want? You have no constraints, how much do you want? That's not what this desired means. What desired means here is that, you know, given our real world constraints, so given our real world constraints, how much expenditure do people or firms do, uh, do people slash firms uh, want to make? So the key is like given our real world constraints. So we are constrained in terms of what our choices are. It's much more realistic than, hey, if you could have anything in the world, what do you want? No, it's, it's given our constraints, what do we want to do? 